Hey guys, welcome to another episode of ClipX Pro Q&A with Stray. The question for this episode is, can I trigger a macro with RP sequence and at the same time use push message? Right now, push message is added to RP sequence and triggered randomly. Uh, that is possible, but probably not in the way that you're trying to do it. So we'll look at how you can accomplish that. Now, for those of you out there who aren't familiar with macros or RP sequences, uh, please take a look at one of the previous episodes called Parameter Control and Randomization, where we cover those two concepts. That way we can all be on the same page here. All right, so with that said, let's jump in. All right, so for this example, I've got a macro set up here, and this is going to toggle the mute state of tracks 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, if we go to live here, I've got an X clip with that macro in it and RP sequence. So it's going to randomly toggle the mute state of those five tracks. All right, now one thing to keep in mind about macros is that they're just action lists. All right, so if we go back to that macro again, here we see it. It's you know going to toggle the mute state of tracks 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That, as far as ClipX Pro is concerned, is the same as this action list. Okay, um, as far as ClipX Pro is concerned, these two things are identical. And that's important to understand because just like an action list, you can add actions before or after a macro, all right, to expand the action list, all right? Um, and that's what this user is trying to do, but he's not uh, getting the results that he wants. So what I've got here is a uh, message. Now he was using push message, which shows a message on push display message will show a message in the, the status bar down here. All right, so he's added this message action after the macro and is wanting that to happen at every step in this, in this random sequence. And that's not going to happen because when we add this action, what happens is this, as far as ClipX Pro is concerned, we have our five mute actions and then at the end, we have the message action. So the message action just becomes another step that might get triggered as part of this random sequence. So we get this. So every once in a while, we'll see that message action come up. All right, there we go. All right, and that's not what the user wants. So how can we achieve what the user wants to have an action occur at every step within a random sequence? Well, there's actually several ways to do that depending on what sort of X trigger you're using. Um, but let's look at a way to do it that'll work with any sort of X trigger. So go back here and I have a macro set up. All right, and this one um, is a little bit different than the first one. All right, you can see we have these curly brackets here. So what are those about? Well, those are groupings. All right, in an action list like this, if we you know, go through and randomly sequence it, it's gonna just trigger one action at a time. With these groupings, we can cause multiple actions to get triggered at the same time. So in each case, we're gonna have two actions per step. We're gonna have the mute action and then a message action. All right, so the mute actions are all different. So we're gonna get some randomization in terms of what tracks are muted, um, but the message action is always the same. So each time we trigger this macro, that message action is gonna occur. So if we go back to live, we can see that now. Each time I trigger this, we're gonna get that action here. Let me wait for it to go away. I'll trigger it again. All right, we get that here again. All right, so that's how you can have a random sequence but have an action occur at every step within that sequence. So I hope that answered the question and gave you some ideas on how you can use macros and groups within sequences. As always, please keep the questions coming and I'll see you in the next episode.